friends welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat West Bengal India this is a posterior subcapsular cataract that is developed after blunt trauma the patient is very young 26 years old young man and I have taken up this case for surgery let us observe the surgery this is the main incision with a 2.8 millimeter steel keratome on the posterior aspect of the limbus at around 11.30 o'clock and now this is phenocaine phenocaine contains tropicamide phenylephrine and gelocaine so this will cause anesthesia as well as dilatation of the pupil. Viscolastic substance has been used to fill up the anterior chamber and it has been applied over the corneal epithelium. This is a side port on the left side of the main incision. And now capsulorexis. This is a uterator forceps. The anterior capsule is pierced, a capsular tag is raised, and this capsular tag is guided anti clockwise. And the rexis is done at around 7 o'clock. The rexis tended to go to periphery, so I brought it back and again went to periphery to get an adequate sized rexis of about 5.5 millimeter. So rexis is done and now a bit of hydro dissection. See this cataract is very soft. It is so soft that ultrasonic energy is not required at all. We can manage the case just by aspiration. Just by vacuum. And here it is. Here goes the vacuum needle. The vacuum is 350 millimeter of mercury, flow rate is 35 ml per minute, and here comes the lens matter. So the lens matter has come, and what is remaining is the cortex. I became very adventurous started aspirating the cortical matter by the phaco needle itself and if I stop here it is fine but I became very much adventurous and I tried to aspirate whole of the cortex by the phaco needle here it is I have caused a rent let us observe this part in slow motion and I would like to advise those who are not experienced in this matter is not to do this. You can try it for other parts, but the sub incisional part is the most tricky part. And here comes the rent. And once it has happened, it has happened, we cannot go back. So we have to manage from this point in a very nice way. I stay there, ask my assistant to push visco as I hold the, the syringe and already the rent has enlarged and some, vis some vitreous has come out through the main wound. What to do now? I asked for vitrectomy cutter and I am waiting for vitrectomy cutter. By this time, I am going to make a side port at around 8 o'clock. I had only one side port and this is another side port because 
I'm going to use irrigation through one side port and aspiration and cutter through the other side. So by this time the vitectomy cutter is ready. Irrigation goes through the right side port. Cutting and aspiration is being done by the left side port. And uh, as I start cutting I came out so that I stopped irrigation so that I cut more than irrigate and irrigate less. Even we can do intermittent irrigation to cause less hydration of the vitreous. And now I am in irrigation aspiration mode. Again I go to cutting mode can see that the rent is distorted. So there are some strands which are hooking the margin of the rent. So I have to do a nice vitrectomy and as I cut the strands that, that is hooking the margin of the rent, the rent takes its original shape. There is one more strand here which is, yes, now it has been cut. And this is the actual size of the rent. It looks like a papaya or it likes a brinjal or eggplant. And now this is the time to implant an intraocular lens. Injecting visco to open the to separate to make a gap between the posterior capsule and the anterior capsule. In this case I have selected a multi-piece intraocular lens. For that I want to I need to enlarge the main wound a bit. And this is the lens. This is Technis multi-piece intraocular lens. And my plan in this case is to place the lens in the capsular bag at on shot. How to do that? I learned this technique from my guru Dr. Suhas Aldipurkar. Push the lens in this way. The leading haptic goes into the capsular bag and now retract the plunger and again push it, push the trailing haptic and the trailing haptic goes into the capsular bag. So this is a nice technique and the uh, intraocular lens is in the capsular bag. And the lens is nicely centered. And now there is some visco behind the intraocular lens. I have to remove that. For that I use irrigation through the left side port and cutting and aspiration through the main wound. Go through the rent, go into the anterior part of the vitreous cavity, start cutting and aspiration and remove all the viscoelastic substance that went there. You may come anteriorly and do some more cutting and aspiration. You can see that the rexis margin is not distorted. The rexis margin is at as it is. 
it means there is no vitreous strands in the anterior chamber i didn't want to use triamcinolone acetate in this case because in some young patients it causes the raised intraocular pressure which may be intractable in some cases very difficult to control with medication i didn't want to use triamcinolone acetate to avoid that situation to avoid a raised intraocular pressure postoperatively this is air bubble and now i'm going to use pilocarpin to constrict the people and to be sure that there is no vitreous strands in the anterior chamber so this is moxifloxacin i used moxifloxacin for closer of the side port in this case in rent cases i usually do this i used i used moxifloxacin to hydrate the corneal stroma on either side of the paracentesis wounds and these paracentesis wounds get closed and now a final lavage of the anterior chamber there is there are some visco sticking to the corneal endothelium i want to remove that and for this the best instrument is this one a simco we can use the aspirating port for irrigation normal irrigation is there plus irrigate through the aspirating port and remove all the visco from the corneal endothelium this is on hour after surgery i ask the patient to wait and after one hour after surgery i recorded this the patient is doing very well and the people has constricted nicely and it is done thank you very much for your attention hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills it will encourage you to manage posterior capsular rains very nicely be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love respect compassion and great surgical competence